Hello, everyone. We're so happy to have you with us tonight. My name is Indra Mungal, and I work at the Asian Art Museum in the Education Department, and I extend a very warm welcome to everyone. Before we begin, we, it has become very important for us to acknowledge that the Asian Art Museum resides on land, which is the ancestral home of the Ohlone peoples. They stewarded the land for generations. And for all of us who live in the United States and all over the world, we're all on indigenous land. And you can actually go to see which lands you reside on by going to native-land.ca and it'll be in the uh, chat box. We would like to pay respect to the elders past, present and emerging for they hold the memories, traditions, and culture of their people across the nation. And we extend our respect to the Ohlone and Coastal Miwok, as well as other indigenous people who are present. So the link is uh, in the box. I wanted to mention that the program is being recorded and will be up on our YouTube station in a few days. So you can revisit and share with your friends and make pancit molo to your heart's content. We actually would like to ask you if you make the uh, recipe for tonight to please take photos, post it on social media and tag us. And that uh, tag will be in the chat box as well at Asian Art Museum. Very big news for us. The Asian Art Museum is open. It's opened today to members, today and tomorrow. You can become a member and go tomorrow. And we will be open to the general public starting Saturday, this Saturday, October 3rd. If you saw the slides in the beginning, we have a lot of, uh, of things in place to make it safe for everyone to be in the museum. Please get your tickets online ahead of time. I am dying to go back to the museum. I haven't seen it in over six months, so I'm gonna try to make my visit happen soon. So now to introduce our wonderful presenter chef for tonight. Yana Gilbuena is a critically acclaimed chef. She's the founder of Salo Series, a program of pop-up communal dinners that has brought the vibrant food culture of the Philippines to all of the 50 United States, as well as Canada, Mexico, Australia, and Europe. We originally had Yana uh, scheduled to have a sit-down dinner in our beautiful Samsung Hall, but uh, unfortunately, we'll, we'll have to look at maybe doing that next year, but we get the second best virtual program with her. Yana is a 2017 Stone Barnes Exchange Fellow and has also been featured in major publications such as the New York Times, San Francisco Chronicle, and National Geographic. And I am so pleased to turn over to Yana, and I'm going to say that I will be uh, looking for questions as she's cooking in the um, in the chat box and presenting them to her because I know there'll be questions about uh, substitutions and and ingredient questions. So welcome, Yana. Thank you so much for having me. This is definitely something that I was looking forward to, um, mainly because it's Filipino American History Month, October, yay. Um, and I really wanted to share um, something that would be relevant, especially and, and comforting, especially for these um, very trying and crazy times. So um, thank you so much, Indra and the Asian Art Museum for giving me this opportunity to um, share one of the best dishes that reminds me of home, really, which is the Pancit Modo. And every time I make it, it just takes me back 7,000 miles, again, back to the homeland. So, thank you. Um, so, before we start, I just wanted to give a really brief introduction of what Pancit is. So, um, everyone knows kind of like Pancit is like noodles, um, but Pancit 
um, is actually like a big umbrella um, that encompasses um, a lot of noodle slash wonton dishes. So pancit molo is actually one of those dishes. Um, next slide, please. So before we get into that, I want to kind of share with you what Filipino food is. So in order to understand Filipino food, we have to look at the history and the geography. So where the Philippines is, is right smack in the middle of Southeast Asia, very close to China, Japan, India, Indonesia, Malaysia. So that alone already tells you that it's going to have a lot of influences and that's exactly what we have. And historically, um, we've had um, three different waves of immigration from the very start, which was the Negritos, the Indones, and the Malays. And with them, they brought their own, like, I would say technological advances and also cooking techniques. Um, and after the first three waves of the first settlers in the Philippines came, of course, China, which is one of the first ones to ever trade it, um, that actually dated back to second, uh, second century AD, when they thought that when they were trading, it was called an island of Mal. And um, they brought with them soy sauce, fish sauce, and obviously cooking with a wok, you know, the stir fry thing. And um, with that, they also introduced a lot of the dishes that they knew back home because what's the best way to remind us of food, of, of home, than food? Um, next slide, please. So what is pancit? Um, pancit comes from the Hokkien word pian e sit, which means conveniently cooked fast. So technically, pancit was kind of like the first fast food um, to the point that um, there was actually a lot of panciterias um, because that's what you wanted to eat. It's high in carbs and also loaded with like different kinds of vegetables and meats. Um, and, you know, before you go to work or whatever it is that you do, you just stop by the panciteria. Uh, next slide, please. So there's definitely a lot of different kinds of pancit. We're not gonna go through all of them, but technically you could um, classify or di differentiate all these different pancits based on the technique and how it's cooked, the size of the noodles, the ingredients that you put into it, um, and the region where it's from. So for example, the most famous pancit is pancit canton. So pancit canton, I know, <laughs> comes from like canton, um, but it's very deceiving because you think it's a Chinese dish and yes, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's from like China. It's actually a Filipino version of that Chinese dish. And um, the noodles, for example, there's sotanghon, there's bihon, um, there's lomi, um, and they have different like either the ingredients that they use also um, would be like, it's either with egg, without egg, with wheat, with rice, um, with mung beans. Um, and there's also the sizes, which means like some, some of them are very thick, like almost like udon noodles. And some of them are very um, thin, like almost like angel hair pasta. And obviously there's also the region, um, which we're going to talk about because um, the pancit recipe that I'm actually going to share with you is from my hometown in Iloilo. And it's called pancit molo because during the time when the Spanish colonized the Philippines, they kind of sequestered all the Chinese immigrants into one place and they called it the Parian. And it's supposed to be kind of like a trading post um, or a market um, because most of the Chinese immigrants that came to the Philippines were traders or merchants. But it's also a way for them to separate the Chinese from the Filipinos. Um, so with that in mind, that's why we have the pancit molo because that dish in particular originated from the district of Molo in Iloilo City. Um, 
Next slide, please. Um, so without further ado, I think we're going to start with the Pandit model. Um, can you guys see my, my screen right here? The, I guess the, um, what do you call that? The cutting board. Um, can we take off the slides so people can see you larger, Yana? Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Okay, great. We're and the recipe will be available um, to the participants. Okay. Great. Okay, cool. So start and I'll field questions <laughs> in the chat box. <laughs> So I kind of prepared this so that it's kind of like magic of television, but kind of walking you through the process. So Pancit Molo has two very important components. It's the broth and the wontons. So we're going to start with the broth first because that's the one that takes a bit of time to, um, to develop the flavors. So the first instructions were, um, to actually um, sear the, the chicken thighs first. Um, so we're going to add a very, um, I would say neutral oil, which is canola, just to heat up the pan. And then once that started heating up, we're going to um, sear the chicken. But while we're waiting for that to heat up, the things that you need in the broth are your garlic, your onions, and your ginger. So unfortunately, I already chopped all them. <laughs> but if you're following along, this is probably the time to start dicing and mincing your garlic and also mincing your ginger. So one way to test, um, the, if the pan is hot, usually you kind of put your hand over it, but one very good one is to, um, if the oil slides fast, then it's properly heated up. If it doesn't slide as fast as it should be, it needs more time. Um, and also, one way to know is you can drop like one of these little onion bits, and if it sizzles, it's ready. But if it doesn't sizzle, it's not ready. Um, so I know people are probably going to ask if there's other substitutions or what can we use instead of, let's say traditionally it's pork, chicken, and shrimp. I know it's a very rich broth, um, <laughs> mainly because um, my island or my hometown is a very coastal city. So we get an abundance of shrimp. So whenever we can um, use or make use of like the shells or anything that could impart more umami and flavor, we try to add it so that nothing goes to waste. Um, so I can hear the onion sizzling. Um, so, oh, red onion. The question was about red onion, but it is red onion, correct? It is red onion. Um, you can always um, use shallots, white onion, yellow onion, but I just prefer the red because I love the way it smells and also the way it tastes and how it kind of sweetens when you um, uh, fry it. Um, so yeah, the pan is ready. So now we're gonna sear the chicken. Um, so searing the chicken, you always wanna make sure that you pat it dry and it's inside down all the time. Um, I would highly recommend having chicken thighs that still have the skin on versus the skinless chicken thighs. Um, just because I love chicken skin. <laughs> it's more of a preferential thing um, than it is um, more for flavor. Um, but also I like to have it bone in versus the boneless chicken thighs. Um, so we'll just briefly like sear it. So 
I don't know if you can see it, but maybe I'll just move this pan a little bit to the a pot, a little bit to the back. Um, so it hasn't browned fully, but you can see that it's definitely drying. So, but for the sake of, I would say, time, I'm just gonna put it right into the pot now. Um, and then this pot is the so 1.5 quarters of um, water. Um, and then I'll just add the garlic and the red onions and also the ginger. So garlic and onions are usually what we call the staples of Filipino food in terms of the gisa. So gisa means to stir fry or just to fry. So we want to really sweat the onions and brown the garlic. And then this is gonna go straight into that broth. Um, how's everybody doing? Oh, I was gonna ask, uh, while you're stirring, stirring that, um, someone wants to know if you have plans to open a restaurant in South San Francisco once COVID is over. <laughs> um, I think what I learned from this is that having a brick and mortar is definitely a big commitment. Um, <laughs> and I think I like still doing my pop-ups and traveling. So I think that's what I'm going to focus on when COVID is over, when we finally get a vaccine. <laughs> And was the broth already hot when you put the chicken in? Yes, um, the broth was already, um, no, well, it boiled already, but I lowered um, the heat so that when I put the chicken in, it's just going to um, start cooking immediately. So now that looks ready. I'm gonna turn this off. And then I'm just gonna add back to this broth. I would say one um, cheat that I can give you is that if you are kind of pressed for time, but you still want to make pancit modo, you could always, this is not a plug, I promise, just use your chicken stock that's already made or any bone broth that you made. Um, and if you really, you know, don't want to have chicken tonight, but still want that chicken flavor, I know some people are like, ooh, I don't like bouillons, but actually this is very good in terms of like adding that depth and that umami that you would usually want to get um, if you were boiling um, and making stock. Um, I would like to see the pan a little closer. The pan. Oh, this one? Mm -hmm. okay. I think so. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to switch over because um, this is going to be the, the actual pan. Okay. All right. So while your, your broth and chicken is boiling, this is the time that you make the wontons. So before we do that, there's, I made four different kinds of wontons. So this is a style, I would say, which is almost like a, like crossing your arms kind of thing. This is like, this is my favorite, which is like the easiest one to make. Um, it's like a little packaged envelope. Um, and then this one, they say it's almost like a nun's bonnet. And this one, I love this one. This is just so simple. It's just a nice triangle. But when you're making wontons, you want to keep in mind that you want, you want to not overfill it. You want to make sure that 
whatever it is that you put inside the wontons doesn't spill out. So there's definitely three different, a lot of different kinds of like wonton wrappers. So there's this one that you can easily get in the market, which is the Hong Kong style um, wonton wraps, or this is the other one, which is the medium wonton wraps. You never want to get the thin ones just because um, they tend to break easy. Um, and you don't want the overly thick ones either because um, the ratio of your um, wonton wrapper to your meat is going to get skewed. So that's why we opt always for the medium wontons. So, um, so this is one of my jobs when I was a kid was to peel the wonton wrappers as nicely as I could so that it doesn't tear. And if it tears, um, I get a punishment. Just kidding, no I don't. <laughs> um, so my measurement usually for filling these wontons is um, about half a teaspoon. So just right there. So it's a nice, cute little ball. Um, and then you always want to put your wontons separate and kind of like in almost like an assembly line because if you're already handling meat with your hands and raw egg you want to you don't want to start opening wonton wrappers with your egg and meat hands you know so we've got the the egg right here what I usually do is seal all the corners, all the edges. Not just the corners, but the entire edge. Yep. Once you've finished doing all the edges, you can now do any option of those wonton I would say designs or wonton wrapping techniques. So the first one we should do is I would say the, the little crossing arms thing. So I don't know if you can see, but you um, basically fold it halfway so that it's almost like a triangle within a triangle. And then you seal this corner and the other corner, and then you just wrap it like this together. And now you've got this little wonton baby. And then for the other one, you wanna seal it all the way to make a proper triangle as if you're making that triangle wonton. And then seal the sides, seal the sides, and then you just make it meet right there. So now you've got this other baby. Um, and then the other one, which is my favorite, is doing the two opposite corners first, and then making all of the four corners meet into this nice little package. And then the last one, which is the easiest one of all, is to just fold it in half, make a triangle, Voila. Um, I'm going to quickly wash my hands after I finish wrapping these two and I will be right back. So if you have any questions, put them in the chat and I will answer them when I get back. Okay, I'm back. I have a couple of questions. Okay. <laughs> One from your friend Cindy asks, will the chicken get tough as it boils? Should it simmer after it boils? Um, usually the chicken doesn't get tough. Um, more than anything, it could actually start um, breaking down 
um, just because we are using chicken thighs. Um, with chicken breasts, it's a different thing. Um, and I opt usually for thighs just because it's more flavorful. Um, yeah. And you want to simmer it definitely as soon as it boils, but it hasn't actually boiled right now. Um, and I know I kind of skipped one part, which was to add um, the shells um, of the shrimp. So I want to do that later after the chicken is actually done so that the um, I can start shredding the chicken. And while I'm shredding the chicken, that um, the shrimp shells would infuse into the broth. And do you use nonstick or cast iron skillets? I usually like cast iron skillets, <laughs> um, but nonstick is also really great because obviously it's less of a headache and it's not as high maintenance as a cast iron. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, vegetarian wonton options. <laughs> I love that one. Um, so my favorite substitute for um, doing like ground meat or ground anything is grinding shiitake mushrooms. So if you put it in the food processor or if you have the patience to chop it and mince it finely, um, good on you. Um, <laughs> but I will do the fast one, which is in the food processor. So just um, do either a blend of shiitake, wood ear, um, even just the white mushrooms, and then use that as a substitute for your ground meat. Great. Uh, then there's one person who wants to know the difference between these and Chinese wontons. Um, I would say we're a derivative of the Chinese wontons. So it's pretty much um, similar, but not the same. I mean, um, the, the way I made these wontons have oyster sauce in them and soy sauce with garlic and um, onions already mixed in the meat. Um, some wontons are just plain, just the meat and then just wrapped immediately. So um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Great, I think those are the questions for now. Looks okay, like cool. Um, so I'm gonna keep giving little cooking tips. Um, I would say if you don't like having the shells, you know, in, in your broth, um, what you can do is just add the shrimp um, as the water is boiling and then like just quickly take it out because the shrimp actually does overcook and it's kind of gross when it's overcooked. Um, or the other thing that you can do um, is actually um, use a little bit of um, like the, the shrimp bouillon too, if you don't want the actual shrimp, but still want the flavor. Um, I'm just gonna make this a... You're not putting the shrimp in the, in the wonton, right? Um, oh. You're separate, because someone's asking if the shrimp is cooked that goes in the wonton. I think that's what they're asking, but. Oh, yes, so there's both. So there's the raw shrimp that I already put in, in here in the, the, the wonton mix. Oh. Um, and then this is just pretty much extra that I want to eat on the side. Because <laughs> I love shrimp. <laughs> but unfortunately, my husband can't have shrimp, so I have to like kind of separate them. Um, so what do you use? Because someone else is asking about people who are looking for shellfish. Oh, for, for, the, for the shrimp part, for the vegetarian. Or someone's saying, I see you use shrimp shells and they have people with shellfish allergies. So they're wondering if they can substitute with nori. Um, definitely nori. Nori is great. Or um, if you're not opposed to like having like, I would say um, even fish stock, you know, um, that would be okay. Cool. 
<laughs> cool. Um, so I'm just waiting for this to boil because um, you, when you want, when you drop the wontons, you actually want it kind of like on a rolling boil. Um, so this, this one that I have, ooh, it's nice, yeah. But the chicken's not done. It needs a little bit more time. Um, yeah, unfortunately my um, stove is not heating fast enough. <laughs> Are there any more questions um, I can field? Let's see. Oh, if you use dried mushrooms, would you need to soak them longer or cook them first? Definitely soak um, the dried mushrooms first. And once they've reconstituted, um, you can just put them straight into the um, food processor or, or just mix them uh, or mince them yourself. Yeah. Um, oh, one thing I did forget was, um, so if you guys have like, um, like chives or scallions and some of the leaves are kind of like wilty, um, don't throw them away. Um, just cut them and add them to your broth. Um, and that way it will add flavor and again, you're not wasting anything. Um, okay, I don't know if you can see this um, pot right here. Can you see it? Just kind of the, a little tip of it. It's hard, it's hard to... Oh, it, it's because add. of the, the light, right? No, just it's a little oh. far away, I think. I mean, we can see the pot and a little bit of the water in it. Okay, okay. Um, so, what we're going to do is um, drop the wontons one by one. So that's not really a rolling boil. It didn't. No, look. not yet. Um, I'm waiting, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm, I don't know if we're okay on time or I should kind of speed things up. You know, we're great on time. Oh. Uh, yes. If you have things you want to talk about, here's another question I can ask when you're ready. Okay. I'm ready. Oh. I think I know the answer to this, but would adding wings and other bony chicken parts to the broth, broth enhance the flavor of the broth? Great, great question. Um, I personally um, buy um, whole chickens um, and then I break it down myself because um, in that way I can use the, the bones or the carcass, the chicken carcass to put into the broth. I love putting chicken wings, chicken feet, um, just because you can extract um, the, the, the collagen from it and it's really good for your skin. <laughs> I always love that. <laughs> yes, more collagen, <laughs> natural collagen. Is that your husband lurking over there? I can see a reflection in the window. We want to see him. <laughs> no, he could come in and say hi. <laughs> Try to come in and say hi. He can scare him away. Let <laughs> me <laughs> <laughs> say hi. <laughs> there. <laughs> we had to put our puppy away. He was too much trouble. He would have eaten all the wontons already. <laughs> <laughs> so would we if we were there. <laughs> <laughs> um. Hmm, what else? Oh, so for people who are not really keen on pork, you could always substitute with different kinds of um, ground meat. So you could do ground turkey, ground bison, ground beef, ground chicken, really whatever is your preference. So, yeah. Great. And are there other variations of this dish according to different geographical locations? That's something that I actually don't know um, because um, I haven't 
encountered another um, pancit molo, really. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me that there's probably another one. Um, <laughs> another version of this, probably with like coconut milk or something. <laughs> Ooh, yum. <laughs> you, maybe you do research on that. You oh, know. yes, that would be very nice. <laughs> and then you open I you on that, Marby. <laughs> oh, yeah, Marby. You could do um, a pop up that has different versions of the Ponce. Um, I actually did um, a pop up series before called Sabao because Sabao means soup um, in Tagalog. And it was three days of three regions, the main regions of the Philippines. So Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So for the first, um, I think for the first day, I featured all the soups that were in the Luzon region. And then the second day was all the Visayas region. And then the third day was all the Mindanaoan um, soup dishes. Um, but I think the Pancit version would be really, really fun to do. Um, <laughs> I can't wait till we find a vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> there, uh, there's a Filipino restaurant near me, FOB. And oh, uh, yes! Yeah, and they, so they're open and serving outside if anyone wants to visit and get those chicken skins. Oh, the si chicken skin chicharron. Oh, yes. <laughs> Janice is great. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> No other questions. Will you ever be in Austin, Texas? Please come. <laughs> I actually love Austin, Texas, and I've been there numerous times um, during the pre-COVID days. <laughs> I used to do a pop-up um, where the Urban Outfitters is, which is kind of like on the main strip, and um, I definitely want to go back. That's for sure, because I, I love Austin. That big, um, that big paragraph is just us uh, coaching people on how to um, see both screens through their phone. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, hopefully so. that can, and oh yes, Allison, I, this is a good prompt. We hear that you're going to be featured in a documentary about women chefs. Will you tell us about that? And Allison can put the link to the teaser in the window. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, so my friends, um, Irene and Lisa Yadao, along with um, Michelle Sampior are the three um, women behind Paper Tongue Productions. Um, so it's kind of like this, almost like a chef's table, but featuring um, uh, women of color chefs um, and basically the women who are um, kind of cooking their, their heritage food. So it's definitely on, on the, the film festival circuit um, and their documentary is called Roots and Wings. That's exciting. Everyone should check out that link that um, is in there. It's a very short teaser. And um, so it's trying to make film festival circuit now and won't be available, completed for a little while. Um, I see another question that says, any other Filipino food recs? Yes, definitely. Um, I definitely want to plug in um, a lot of the folks who are still hustling despite, you know, the corona um, pandemic. Um, so there's Chillogs in Daly City. Um, there's the Sarap Shop. Um, there's Pinoy Heritage. Um, I, uh, sadly, some of the folks have decided not to push forward, so there's only a handful. Seven Mile House, yes, definitely is in the cusp of, um, like San, San Francisco border, that's why it's Seven Mile House. Um, I'm not sure if they're open, but yes, please check them out. And also Nick's is 
the a really cool vegan um, place too. Where's Nick's in in on Grand in Oakland? Is that? Uh, they have multiple locations. Um, there's one in Soma. There's one in Daly City, and there could be one in Oakland. I'm not sure. It looks like it says South San Francisco. I don't know if that's accurate, but. Chef Ava says to follow her and you can find out. Um, yeah, that's what that says. That's great, those recommendations. And then will you be Chef cooking Ava. the one? Oh, you know <laughs> Chef Ava? Oh, I'm, I'm not sure, but thank you for those recommendations. <laughs> oh, and someone says Seven Mile House is open. It has lots of outdoor seating. So yeah, let's support so that. Um, I would say Filipino um, spots here. And Lucky 3-7 in Oakland is another one. Um, someone asked, will you be cooking the wontons in the soup or just in boiling water? Um, so this water actually is the, the soup stock that I've already made ahead of time. So this is the combination of the chicken and the shrimp. And now it's, it was boiling and then I turned it off because I was talking. <laughs> so now, I don't know if you can see, but this is the, the rolling boil. Yes. Yes. Um, so I'm going to add all the wontons that I already made, just plop them in. Give them about like, I'd say a minute or two. Um, and you would know when the wontons are ready because they're gonna start floating up. I made a lot of wontons. <laughs> I don't know why I made a lot of wontons. It's just me and my husband. <laughs> and your dog. Uh, he's not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> That's cruel. <laughs> gonna smell it <laughs> oh he's spoiled though he he already had some of the shredded chicken earlier <laughs> um so one thing that i did forget to mention is what puts pancit molo within the pancit realm is um whatever leftover wontons you have um Oops, sorry. You pretty much slice it into um, thin strips. And then this is what's going to make like, like that pancit um, effect in a sense. So I should have definitely peeled them one by one first before just cutting them. That was my bad. Um, so now I'm going to spend the next five minutes unwrapping all of them. <laughs> and then once you put all the wontons in, the shredded chicken goes in last just because A, it's already cooked and um, you don't want to overcook it too much. Okay, I'm checking on this other chicken. So, um, this chicken is done, uh, mainly because you can see it um, peeling off from the, from the bone. Um, so I'm gonna put it in this pan right here. This one is done too. And then now I'm gonna, just gonna add the shells to this. If you had a big batch and had to split it in two for boiling, do you have to switch out the water and reboil between the two? I think I got that question correct. You can read that if I'm... Let's just switch out the water and reboil. Um, yeah, that's really no problem. I, yeah, you could definitely split it into two um, and then combine it later if you want to. 
Um, or you could just put one batch away and freeze it and then take it out whenever you need an extra of the broth. Did that answer your question? Maybe Lynn can type in here and let us know. Um, I was going to ask you if you were to do the uh, Salo series sit down dinner for us and there was still, you know, some fears, COVID fears lingering like next year. Um, have you ever had to make any amendments to the sit down eat, communal eating with your hands? Like maybe have your own banana leaf with the food on it or is that does that defeat the purpose of what you're trying to do um i think we're all definitely trying to pivot but at the same time still um want to keep that you know tradition and heritage going um i think for me it would have it would be like a personal like kamayan plate or a kamayan tray that would have your own banana leaves and you'll just have kind of like uh, mini servings essentially of what would have been on the communal part of the table. Um, and I always tell this to my diners is wash your hands <laughs> before you come to the table. I've always said that that was even pre COVID. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think it's just, it, it's good to always just wash your hands because I think we take it for granted that our hands are, you know, are available and whatever, but they do retain a lot of, you know, uh, I would say the bacteria and whatever viruses that we would carry if we did not wash them. So. Okay. So you, so we could consider if we wanted to have you there and have individual people, everyone has their own banana leaf, but they're sitting communally and eating with other people. Yes, um, but still we will have to space it six uh, feet apart. <laughs> well, this would be really much later, like way yes. later next year, hopefully. Yes. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, if there's already outdoor dining, especially if they're in their pod of people, um, I think that's okay. Um, but if they're all strangers and kind of wary about, you know, uh, the spread of the virus, then definitely just do all the precautions, personal, personal Kamayan trays and six feet apart. <laughs> okay, well, we'll oh. I was gonna say, this is the, the wontons are definitely done. They're um, boiling up already. Um, they've bubbled up, so which is great. So now I just wanna add um, the shredded chicken. Oh God. And I got um, clarification on the question about the wontons when you're, uh, at a place I can ask. Okay. Um, so now we've added the chicken. Um, and also one major thing is um, while you're doing the broth and all of that, you always want to taste it, see if it needs salt or anything else. Um, so this is the broth that I already made. It's already done. But for this broth that's um, being made on the side, um, as you make your broth, you always want to taste. Add fish sauce, salt, whatever your preference is. Um, and then you just add incrementally so you don't either over salt it or under salt it. Um, Okay. So wants to know about the ratio of wontons to the water, like overcrowding, putting too many wontons in, and if you should split it. Oh, oh, okay, got it, got it. Um, to be very honest, I made twenty-four wontons, and I just put um, 
15 in there. <laughs> um, and that was with the, um, uh, this was actually the twice the, um, the water, which was um, three quarts. So with, with this, the 1.5 quart, it would be um, 12 wontons. Um, but if you want, again, as you made a big batch, like I think the ratio would be um, one is to two is great. Yeah. Like, could you actually take them out and then put in a new batch of wontons then? Like you could, you know, one of those uh, large spoons with, you know, slotted spoon. Oh, got it, got it. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that um, because it's literally like part of the dish. Um, so it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't really affect it too much. Um, but Mary had a great, um, tip, which was to boil the wontons in clear water to get the rid of excess starch. Um, but yeah, if you want to do that, if you're doing batches, then I think that's a good idea. And this is done. The wonton soup is done. I'll be right back. I'm going to get a bowl. Cool. So now we're just going to fish everything out. Okay. And usually I like having the <coughs> The fried garlic on top of it for just crunchies and also a fried shallot. And since I already made extra shrimp, I'm gonna add it to my noodles. Maybe three. I love three. I think you'll need to get closer to the camera <laughs> so it can really. <laughs> Can you get a little more, a little closer? Yeah, that, yeah. he gets it. Oh, it's gorgeous. Um, and I forgot to chop the, the scallions. I'm just gonna do what I said earlier, which was to put this in the broth right here. And then sprinkle, sprinkle. And this is the final one, yay. Wow. And, and we have to remind folks, if you make this, please take a picture, post in social media, and tag both us and Yana. And Allison's going to put the, our, our tags in the window now. It's at Asian Art Museum and at Solo Series. So please, don't you want to see what they've done? <laughs> yes, I want to see, definitely. Um, yeah, I have some extra funds at Molo if anyone wants to come over and I can just socially contact less, you know. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is tempting. <laughs> oh good, so we'll make it tomorrow night. Danielle, I hope you'll post to us. That's great. So are there, uh, oh yeah, be careful what you put out into the world. Allison is saying, <laughs> at your door. <laughs> Well, so is that it for the recipe? That's, that's, it. that's it. Okay. So we'll post the recipe one more time. And I, I really want to remind folks also, this is, um, thank you for reminding us, it's uh, Filipino American Heritage Month, starts October. It's all of October. On October 8th, the Asian Art Museum, I guess I should be on camera, Asian Art Museum has a really cool virtual package that we will be posting on our website. Uh, my colleague Triana Patel put it all together and included one of your recipes, Yana. I think for this, actually this recipe, 
and there's music and there'll be there'll be very uh, cool activities. So please check it out. We're going to do these for all of our cultural celebrations since we uh, are unable to be in person. We have these great virtual packages, fun for the whole family. Awesome. And how how come there is no punset in the broth with the wonton? I thought you did that. Um, so uh, Mary, this is the this is going to compensate or actually the the sliced wonton wrappers are going to be kind of like the pancit um component of the pancit model so um that's kind of like why it's uh, classified or known as pancit model but you had put that in when you were boiling the wonton i did yeah. okay yeah. so maybe yeah okay yeah. that's cool thanks for clarifying mary <laughs> Any other last questions, folks, before we uh, sign off here? We've got, we have the recipe, we're, we've got all these questions that have answered. Oh, we can substitute egg noodles in the broth, question. Definitely. Um, you can add egg noodles, you can add rice noodles if you want. Um, it kind of makes it, um, I would say, not pancit molo anymore, but definitely. Like whatever your noodle preference. <laughs> Some of us are gluten free, so we'd love that rice noodle. Although it's harder to get the wonton wrappers than. That are rice flour based, yeah. 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 I tried making it by hand before and I was like, I'm sorry, this is not my skill set. I just. <laughs> I just have to admit it. <laughs> you know, I'd like to ask before you go if you have uh, any other, if you could tell us briefly maybe about your, how you came to be a chef and like what, what interested you as a maybe young person or did you, how'd you get inspired? Um, I think for me, um, like cooking was very, uh, I would say like a, a natural thing. And that was something that I grew up doing um, just because um, my grandma was always like, you need a job. <laughs> you can't, <laughs> you can't just sit and watch TV all day. So ever since I was a kid, like, I mean, as little as maybe four or five, I was already like in the kitchen um, and helping prepare meals. Um, so that's something that I thought was everyone did, you know, growing up. So um, I didn't really seek out to be a chef. Um, it was more of, uh, what do you call that? Serendipity? <laughs> a happy accident. Um, and it was because I was um, living in New York and it was winter time and I was craving arroz caldo. So I wanted to order it through Seamless or anything, but even in New York, where it's supposed to be a melting pot of cultures and everything, like it was so hard to find a Filipino place that was going to do delivery for me. <laughs> um, and that's kind of like what prompted me to like really think about like, why is Filipino cuisine not out there more and um just to put it into context that was like 20 2012 maybe and so i kind of put it on myself to just like hey i want to educate people um what filipino food is beyond what the the you know the usual ones like the, the usual suspects of adobo pancit and lumpia because even with you know these three things like there's so many variations of adobo. There's so many variations of pancit, so many variations of lumpia. You know, there's not just one and that's the end all be all. So um, I started doing pop-ups and that's kind of like how I fell into this. So <laughs> yeah. Wow, this is great to hear. It's, it's uh, uh, what do they say? Um, 
necessity is the mother of invention. Like you had to create it because you were <laughs> desperate for that food in New York. Yeah. It's even hard, been hard in the West Coast. Uh, Filipino restaurants that I grew up, you know, knowing they, they would come and go and you sort of go, oh no, I missed that. Like they didn't have a longevity and that was really sad. I, I don't know, because I grew up in San Francisco and I remember, you know, they kind of were yeah, a couple years and gone. So, mm. well, I think we've come to the end of our program, and we're so grateful you've shared so much of yourself with us, your heart, your food, and uh, I just I appreciate everyone who came tonight. We're very excited to see what you make, and I know I'm very hungry now. Oh, where is your pop up? This will be the last question. Where's your pop up appearing? Do we have it right now? <laughs> I, I have it. It's it's kind of at a standstill right now, um, just because a part of me wants to um, uh, be more supportive of um, my friends who are in the restaurant industry that are struggling with their brick and mortars. So I would rather funnel people over to support them um, however and whenever they can. So. Um, I can definitely send a list over to um, Indra and the Asian Art Museum folks if you're interested in wanting to order Filipino food. Um, maybe we can compile a list of Filipino restaurants in the Bay Area that would um, kind of feed into that craving for right is now. Is something you could post on your website so people could go to Solo Series or is that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, that's actually a great idea. I would love to do that on my Instagram. So yeah. Okay. So Salo series is the, is the, um, I'm going to put it in here. Here. It's all when we're, I mean, all together, right? <laughs> not, <laughs> not separate. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We're going to let you go eat now that your, your appetite are all stirred up <laughs> yeah. and, and thank you yana really it, i hope we're gonna have you next year everyone watch out for the kamayan uh <laughs> the next covid year. kamayan feast <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> <COVID. laughs> yeah, we're not going to use that word in the social <laughs> But thank you so much for definitely this opportunity to like share and, you know, I haven't dressed up in a while. So thank you for that opportunity to dress up too. This is great. Um, <laughs> and thank you for kicking off Filipino American History Month with, with us. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. Bye everyone.